Journey. Happy, happy. Great to be here. Happy Thursday. Happy, happy walking the path. Happy fifth day of October. It's the fifth or the sixth. I don't know. I don't even know what day it is. But I know this. I know what time it is. The time is right. It's the right time for talking about germination. But before we talk about germination, I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, hey, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to talk to you a little bit about Rhythmia um, and, and share with you a little bit of what's going on about Rhythmia. And then I want to talk about germination, which is, you know, such an important thing to remember on the process of transformation because a lot of times we have this awakening within us, something, something awakens within us and we feel like life should be different, but then ostens ostensibly our life circumstances, the, the, con the context of our life hasn't changed. Something's been activated within us, but on externally, we're still waiting for that manifestation to come in. And so today I wanted to talk about uh, strategies for navigating that time and to, to refer to nature a little bit about how we can understand this more because nature is our teacher. Now, before I get into germination, I want to talk to you. Hey, Shelly, great to see you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Diego, a whole brother. Great to see you, man. Um, so, Rhythmia, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm broadcasting live today from my remote location in Playa Negra, down the street from Rhythmia. Um, uh, but I was you know, at Rhythmia this week, taught the Monday class, taught, taught integration yesterday. Uh, they're going into ceremony tonight, the last of four ceremonies. And this is always such an amazing time because this is the, the turning point. The whole week is culminating in this evening. Um, and it works the same every week. That's the amazing thing. Like this works every week, just the same. That people come in, they're a little freaked out. What's going on? What did I get myself into? They start to drink the medicine. They get even more freaked out. What is this? What did I get myself into? And then pop, 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 pop. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, people are like, I know what I got. I can't believe I was even worried about this. This is so amazing. The transformation, the merger of the soul. This is what Rhythmia is all about, a soul merger. Uh, and what happens when we merge with our soul? What we mer when we merge with our soul, there's contentment with the way that we live. When we merge with our soul, we're in acceptance. When we merge with our soul, we're in joy. When we merge with our soul, we're in oneness. When we merge with our soul, we're stopping the civil war. When we merge with our soul, we're coherent. And life changes because we're vibrating. We're not against life. We're with life, right? We're not against life. We're with life. And life is leading us. This, this is what's available. And so I want to encourage you to look, find out about Rhythmia. There's a great movie called The Reality of Truth. Uh, there's a great movie called um, Mrs. Moon's Medicine. Uh, Awakening the Soul is another movie. You can find all those for free on YouTube. Awakening the Soul, Mrs. Moon's Medicine, uh, and um, the reality of truth, really cool films, documentaries, also about Rhythmia. So it'll give you a sense of what's going on with Rhythmia. All right, Rhythmia, I'm so grateful for Rhythmia. I'm so grateful for Jerry. I'm so grateful for Jeff. I'm so grateful for all the people that come each week. It's amazing. Now I want to talk to you about germination. Okay, so this story of germination, uh, it's so funny how things come to us, right? Like we're just living life and we have an insight. So here's what happened to me. I, many years ago, I was a vegan, and I'm not a vegan anymore for a couple of reasons. My body, I felt my body started to feel sluggish, and um, I was found that eating uh, protein appropriately uh, made my body feel better. It's the way my body works. I really loved being a vegan. Also, I love to do vegan fast still to this day where I sort of purge from animal products and I do feel a lot lighter. There's a lot of benefits, uh, but on a regular basis for me, I'm not convincing anybody. I'm not making a statement. I'm just saying for me, I chose not to be a vegan. And, but when I was a vegan, I was looking for ways of getting more protein, right? Um, hey everybody, great to see you. And, and that was one of the reasons why I ended up not being a vegan was because I couldn't get enough protein that wasn't processed, you know? And, so I go to the farmer's market to find out, because like, I heard, I heard at the farmer's market that um, 
sprouted seeds and nuts were higher in protein and easier to digest for people who are on a plant-based diet. So I went to go buy some sprouted seeds and nuts. So I go to the I go to the farmer's market and I see the stand and I asked that there was a kid behind, like a young young guy behind the, the counter. And I said, um, where are the sprouted seeds and nuts? And he goes, right there. He's like, well, they look like normal seeds and nuts. They just like look like bags of nuts and seeds. I'm thinking sprouts, right? Like they should be sprouted. Uh, and so I go, well, these aren't sprouted. He goes, yeah, they're sprouted seeds and nuts. He said, um, they don't appear as sprouted to me. He goes, look, I don't know, man. My parents just asked me to, to watch the stand. So like, do you want them or not? So I bought them and I go home and I look up the definition. I go, well, you know, sprouted seeds and nuts. And I look up sprouted seeds and nuts. And what I find is this definition of germination. Germination, the biological definition of germination is the movement of any being from smaller, uh, uh, the, the, the movement of um, any organism, excuse me. Germination is the movement of any organism from smaller existence to greater being. Now, that sounded pretty uh, existential, pretty met metaphysical to me, right? Like the movement of any organism from smaller existence to greater being. Wow, I'm up for that. I'd like to be a sprouted seed in that, right? Well, guess what? We are. That's the thing. So, so I start to look up more about germination, right? And here's what I found about the seed. This is so cool. So a seed has a shell, right? A seed has a seed shell. And so let's let's use my hand as an example, right? The seed has a protective coating, right? And the protective coating, for you guys over here in Instagram land, right? The protective coating ha ha is hard, right? It's protective. And inside the protective coating is protein, right? The protein that, that the seed will need for its next stage of growth. It's like already there it's already prepared for it the way has already been made inside of that is a latent metabolic machinery this latent metabolic machinery is waiting for the right circumstance the right condition the right soil temperature the right moisture the right time of year the right sunlight the right nitrogen right you know all of that stuff that it needs to activate that latent metabolic machinery inside the seed so this seemed really interesting to me, right? So what happens? The activation occurs. And what happens inside the seed when the activation occurs? Why were those sprouted seeds and nuts at the farmer's market look like regular seeds and nuts? Because the activation had occurred inside, but nothing on the outside had changed. Inside, all this stuff is happening. The latent metabolic machinery gets activated. It starts eating away at the protein. It starts eating away at the protein and, and um, preparing to burst through for the plumal to emerge and the taproot to emerge. Now, what does this all have to do with transformation? Well, just wait, let me tell you. Okay, <laughs> so what does it have to do with transformation? Isn't that us, right? What do we do? Something happens to us and we split from ourselves. We split for protection because who I was being, uh, who I was being at that moment I'm, I'm little me, I'm perfect and complete, I, I, everything's one in my life, and something happens, I didn't get to play kickball, I was abused, I, I didn't get to play Monopoly with my brothers and sisters, I was abandoned. It could be anything, it could be something little, or it could be something considered really big. But trauma isn't what happened, trauma is the stories that we tell ourselves about what happened. So, so something happens to us, we split out of protection, we say, oh my gosh, uh, I was, uh, so here's my story. My story was I had a glass of orange juice. I remember the day I split. I saw it. The medicine showed me and breath work showed me. Um, I, I had a memory of sitting down with a glass of orange juice. And my I sat down next to my dad. My dad goes, what do you got there? And I go, I got a glass of orange juice. And he says, oh, I'd like one. And I go, I checked in with myself. I remember. I really do. I remember going, I don't feel like getting the glass. Of I don't feel like it. And so I checked in with my feelings. And then I told him. I don't feel like getting you a glass of orange juice. And he goes, oh, okay, no problem. Uh, but the next time you want me to do something for you that I don't want to do, I'm not going to do it. Now, my dad, you know, that's not true. My dad would have done anything for me, right? Give, anything. That wasn't the truth. But as a kid, I thought it was. And as a kid, I was scared because I wasn't safe. I remember being like, oh, my gosh. You're not going to do something for me 
if I don't do this for you, like later on when I need something, you're going to not do it. And you're my dad. Oh my God, I got scared. I'm not safe. I'm not safe. What I learned in that moment, and I went, I'm not safe. Who was I being in that moment? I was being authentic, true to myself, speaking my truth, right? And I said, oh, well, that doesn't fly, man. You can't do that because if you speak your truth and are authentic and are true to yourself and do what you want, know what you want, know what you need, know what you deserve, know what you desire, that's not going to get your needs met. That's going to get you not get your needs met, right? So it was the beginning of codependency. It was the beginning of giving to get. It was the beginning of going along to get along. It was, And, and it was also the beginning of being a... a hyper empathic right like who did so what happened is is i split oh who i was being authentic true to myself engaged speaking my truth checking with my feelings that's not good shove that aside suppress that side who do i need to be to get my needs met project out the perfect one right i had to be perfect i had to do what you wanted to do i had to to be aware of what your feelings were put your feelings above my own make sure i understood what you needed so that i could get what i needed later fundamentally manipulative and coercive right but that's what i learned in that moment the story wasn't true but i thought it was i incorporated that story it got sutured within me and i lived this projected self of I need to be perfect in order to belong. I need to do what you need first in order for me to get my needs met. I need to not care about what my feelings are or what my needs are. I need to be concerned about what your needs are so that I can get my needs met. That's what happens when we split, okay? And and now that that all of that giving to get, being the perfect one, being charming and helpful and, and don't rock the boat. And all of those were protective mechanisms. They were coping mechanisms um, that protected me, I thought, right? And that they protected me for a while. That's just like the seed shell. So we split, something happens, we split, and we have to develop this protective mechanism, coping mechanisms that protect us, okay? Now, now we go through life and we're finding our relationships aren't good. I'm not getting along so much. I feel alone. I feel isolated, all this stuff, right? And, and life isn't working for me. So I start doing breath work. I start do meditating. I start doing plant, working with plant medicine. And we begin to see our story. We begin to see the narrative that we were, um, that we were telling ourselves, the lie that I have to give to get, to get my needs met, the lie that I have to, um, that I have to go along to get along in order to get my needs met, the lie that I can't check in with myself, I can't speak my truth, I can't know what I need, want, and desire, um, and that my needs are important because if I am focused on that, I won't get my needs met, right? That's the lie, but that was the protective mechanism. That was the seed shell. That was the shell of the seed, right? Inside of me was waiting for the right conditions for that latent metabolic machinery for the truth to be told, right? And when that activation occurs, it's like, oh, wow. I see it all so clearly. All of a sudden, something within me is activated. But everything in my life is the same. Nothing has changed on the outside. Everything inside is changing, activation has occurred, but I might still be in the same relationship, I might be still doing the same job, I might still be, um, I might still be uh, uh, with friends that, that are um, taking advantage of that kindness or whatever, right? I might be in, in unhealthy relationships. Uh, I might have set all those structures up and it's gonna take a while for me to recalibrate, right? So, so in perfect design, everything is designed perfectly, that I start working through those coping mechanisms. I start to realize, right? I start to eat away like the seed. I'm eating away at the protective coating. I'm using the, 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 the protective coating is the fuel. That's where the protein is. It's the fuel for my next stage of growth. Uh, Ryan Holiday wrote a book called The Obstacle is the Way. I love that title, right? It says it all right in the title. The things that we think are blocking us are actually the way to our next stage of growth. 
the things that were protecting us, the hard coatings that we've coping mechanisms are actually the fuel to, to propower our next greatest yet to be our next expression of who we are. Um, and so this is the story of germination. So what do you do, right? You guys, have you had an activation? Put it in the text, put it in the chat stream. Let me know. Have you had an activation, but like life hasn't changed. You're in the same job, you're in the same relationship, you're in the same situation, right? So what do you do? Well, shit, I don't know. <laughs> That's not true. I know. Well, I don't know, but I know what worked for me. Patience, surrender, surrender. What is the, what are the tools? What are the coping or what are the strategies that we can use? First of all, first of all, surrender is the biggest uh, strategy. So what is surrender? Surrender is an art. Surrender is uh, a, an art. And once we've mastered it, the world is ours. How do we surrender? We have to remember five things. Patience, faith, trust, awareness, and meditation, right? These are the five components of surrender. This is the strategy for, for jumping in to the next greatest yet to be for you. Deborah Charles says, let me put this up for everybody to see. Deborah Charles says, um, have had an activation and then started the surrender and made some changes in the outside that didn't fit. And now, wow, things are moving. Yeah. Angela says, um, same job, same habits. After activation, I actually have gained weight and have gone backwards into revisiting old habits from my past. I'm looking forward to my next journey. Ooh, okay, Angela. First of all, there's no going backwards. Sometimes we need to ground, right? Sometimes we're gaining weight because we need to ground, you know? So give yourself a break on that. Going backwards, revisiting old habits. Don't worry. Don't waste time in self-recrimination. My favorite story, uh, well, not my favorite, one of my favorite stories, one of the stories I like to recall from the Bible is a guy standing next to Jesus. And he says, um, you know, just by standing next to someone who's so connected, so open and hearted and loving, such high vibration, the guy exclaims, I believe. And then in the next instant, he says, heal thou my disbelief. I believe, heal thou my disbelief. So Angela, remember that story, because it means that the old thought patterns come back quickly, right? We catch a glimpse of something, something got activated within you, but then the old thought patterns come back quickly. So don't waste time in self-recrimination. Surrender. It looks like you're going backwards, but you're actually moving forwards. Sometimes retreat is actually the way forward. So here's what we're gonna, here's so, so surrender for Angela and for all of us, what does that look like? Patience, faith, trust, awareness, and meditation. We have to have patience. We can't rush the oak tree out of the acorn. We can't rush the butterfly out of the chrysalis. Everything in nature takes its time. I was driving the other day and I saw two trees in the field. Two trees, identical trees. They were the same height, same shape. They were sort of like out in this field, just two trees in the middle of the field. One was blooming, one wasn't. Nature has its own rhythm. Nature has its own timing. So the activation has occurred within us. We must have patience. Patience. Faith. Faith is the evidence of things unseen, the substance of things hoped for. Faith, right? So, so the evidence of things unseen, that means that everything moves from the unseen to the seen, from the invisible to the visible, from the formless to the formed. It happens in consciousness and then manifests into form. That's the nature of reality. That's the nature of manifestation. Look at anything in the room that you're in. It was an idea before it was a thing. So we can see that very clearly, simple enough. Things go from, from thought to manifestation. It's even biblical. In the beginning, there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. Um, in the beginning, there was an idea, and that idea was vibrating high in the unified field in the realm of infinite possibility, and that vibration lowered its frequency until E equals MC squared, energy became matter. And then it manifested, right? This is the process of manifestation. So we know that things are moving from thought into form that are going to take their time, right? Th things take time in this realm, in this plane, in this dimension, in the third dimension, stuff takes time. So how can we quicken it? By surrendering, by having patience. 
and faith, faith, that thing, substance of things hoped for, the, the, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. The tree, the seed we were just talking about, has a perfect blueprint for everything that that tree or that plant is going to be. That's the evidence of something unseen manifesting itself. So we must have faith that everything is unfolding in absolute divine perfection, that something is happening, something wonderful is happening. That's what you want to say to yourself, Angela and Deborah, something wonderful is happening. I know something wonderful is happening. Hang in that vibration and watch as you quicken the activation that it's happened already within you. Give thanks that it's already happened. We can look at Jesus for another thing. You know, not so interested in Christianity, but I love Jesus, <laughs> Yeshua, right? Because um, he said some really cool stuff. Uh, think of the Sermon on the Mount. The, he, he, he went to, to preach, right? And, and thousands of people come and he's got five fish and two loaves of bread. And um, Grace over here at Instagram says, I know something wonderful is happening. That's a great mantra. I know something wonderful is happening. Deborah says, give thanks and it's already happened. Here's, a, here's my story about that, Deborah. Um, so Jesus is uh, he's preaching on the Sermon on the Mount and, and he's got to feed the people, but he's only got five fish and, and two loaves. What did he do? He didn't say, oh shit, we don't have enough. Black, oh my God, how are we gonna ever do this? This is impossible. No, he gave thanks. He blessed it and gave thanks and it multiplied. That's the lesson. So activation has occurred. Give thanks. Bless it. I know something wonderful is happening. I give thanks for it. Watch it multiply. Watch it quicken. Patience, faith, trust. We got to trust. We got to trust in life. We can trust in life. You don't have to just go, oh, tell me to trust. No, trust in life. We can look at the rhythms and patterns of life and we can see that every dark night, has a dawn. Every winter has a spring and every storm has a sunny day. Things will not stay this way. Everything changes. Everything in this realm changes. There is a realm of the eternal, unchanging and real and true. This is a reflection of that realm. The sages and philosophers have told us throughout the ages. I'm going to feel like that's true. <laughs> and, and that things don't get caught up in appearances because things change. Everything is changing. Everything in life is changing. Nothing stays the same. We can see that truth. Nothing stays the same in third dimension world, the third dimension realm. So have patience, have faith and trust that everything is evolving. Everything is changing. Your dark night will have a dawn. Your stormy day will have a sunny day. Your winter of discontent will become the spring of rejoicing and happiness and joy. It always has happened. And look in your life and see that it's always happened. It's always happened. Patience, faith, trust, awareness. We have to bring our awareness to the process of germination. Our awareness to this, like I'm, I'm bringing my, I'm bringing my awareness means I'm bringing myself to the present moment. I'm bringing myself to this now moment. There's no better now. There's no better time. Here's another way to quicken your activation. Don't get caught up in fantasizing about the future. Don't get caught up in nostalgia about the past. Like uh, Angela might say, "Oh, I'm no nostalgic when I was 10 pounds thinner." Right? Oh, when I had that, oh my God, things were so much better. But when you were 10 pounds thinner, Angela, it wasn't enough, was it? Because because I've been there. I've been there. Oh, if I could only get back to my body when it was like, but then I remember when my body was like that, still wasn't enough. I was still like, well, but there's still this here. Well, I could be bigger here. And I could be, you know, like it's never enough. It's never enough when we're searching for something. So we bring our awareness to what is happening and become present in this now moment for the present moment is the access to the eternal now, that which is unchanging and true and real. So by placing my awareness, by becoming present to what so and accepting it unconditionally, radical acceptance of the present moment, acceptance is the only thing. Joseph Aragazi, my brother, I love you. <laughs> Good to see you. Acceptance is the only thing that liberates. Condemnation never liberates. So as we place our awareness and fully accept radical acceptance of this now moment, there's no better moment than now. There's no better me than now. There's no better job than now. There's no better husband or wife or boyfriend or now, 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 no better anything. Because if we think 
what I notice for myself is the minute that I start thinking about the future and fantasize about it or am nostalgic about the past, for me, it's the beginning of compulsive behavior because it spins me into that cycle of not enoughness. I'm not enough and then I'm begetting more not enoughness. To he who has, even more shall be given. To he who has not, even that shall be taken away. So, so the five components of surrender, patience, faith, trust, awareness, and finally, meditation. Meditation. We must take time to stop. We just got to take time to stop for a minute. I find, you know, that placing my awareness on that which is true, that which is real, that which is unchanging, that, that calms the mind, that opens, that creates a place of receptivity within me. For there is, when we say that the Christ consciousness, the Buddha consciousness is in us, it means that there's, what does faith of a mustard seed mean? It means that we have that, it's like just a little bit, the seed, the faith of a mustard seed has been implanted within us. The consciousness of I am, the consciousness of Christ, the consciousness of Buddha has been implanted within us. And like that seed I talked about at the beginning, it's waiting for the right conditions for activation. And so meditation is placing our awareness on the center of our, as Herman, as Howard Thurman says, of our consent, the nerve center of our consent, that place of receptivity within us, the altar of the most high, the secret place of the holy of holies within us. We're placing our awareness there. That's meditation. And, 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 and in doing so, we free, we create an up space within us to receive, the place of receptivity within us is activated because the innermost God and the uppermost God are the same. And therefore, therefore meditation helps me to find that innermost God within as I place my awareness on that which is true, that which is real, that which is enduring, that which is unchanging within me. I bring that forth. I activate that, the activation. I'm connecting with that which is real and true and enduring and unchanging that is outside of me, the innermost God and the up uppermost God. It's the same, same, but uh, wow, I think I just talked myself off my point. <laughs> okay. Wow, you guys, I think this is it. I think that was it. Recap, germination, the process, uh, biological definition of germination is the uh, biological process of any organism moving from greater, uh, from smaller existence to greater being. The process of any organism moving from smaller existence to greater being. That's germination. We are like that seed. We are in the process of germination. Germination, the seed has a seed coating. It has a latent metabolic machinery within it. When that is activated, things change on the inside, but it doesn't change on the outside. It takes a minute for our life to catch up. How do we deal with the internal activation and nothing changing on the outside like the sprouted seed? With our surrender strategy, our our um, germination strategies of surrender, patience, faith, trust, awareness, and meditation. Cool, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. I love you, man. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who else is joining us? Fluid Stillness, Rebecca, um, New Day, New Leaf, Pahalu, Shelly Nichols. Thank you, Melissa over here, Deborah Charles. Thank you for all your comments. Um, Diego. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Wishing you much love mm, mm, mm. and joy. I wish you acceptance, joy, and oneness. Much love. And so it is.